Okay, so we've done a lot of logo design tutorials over the years, you and I. And I think it's fair to say that many of us love the logos that we create for ourselves and our clients. But what if we could just go one step further and bring those logos to life with some simple animation like this? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do in this tutorial. Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial that is in partnership with NVIDIA, we're gonna jump into Adobe After Effects and get creative with some logo design animation. Now remember, if you are using a dedicated GPU and that GPU just happens to be an NVIDIA card, you're gonna be able to squeeze out a little bit more performance from some GPU accelerated effects, but we'll get to all that later in the tutorial. And also, before we get started, a huge thank you to everybody who entered the Adobe Dimension competition. Honestly, there's been so many incredible and inspiring entries, like seriously, wow. <laughs> so stick around to the end of the video where I'll be announcing the winner. Okie dokie, so without further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. Rightio, so we're now in After Effects and you can see that I've created a new document. Now the only thing I've added is a sound effect up here. This is like a scratchy sound effect that I'm just gonna use at the end. It's completely optional and not required to follow along with this tutorial, but it's just a nice thing to add at the end once we've created our logo animation. So the first thing I'm going to do now is create a new composition. So we can click on this. I can give this a name. We'll just call it logo. And I'm happy with the size, 1920 by 1080. Frame rate here, you can go with 30, 60 if you want something smoother or even less than this, it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna leave this at 30 for now. And the duration, well, I'm just gonna set this to, we'll go for about four seconds. I don't think my animation is going to play for much longer than that. Background color black, all good to go, click OK. And there you go, you can see it takes me to my new composition. And if you want to edit that, just go up to composition, down to composition settings, boom, there you go. Okay, so for this next bit, what you can do is go over to the project panel over here. Now, if you don't see any of these panels that I've got open on my workspace, go to window, and you can see all of them highlighted that I'm using here. So you can customize these, drag them around to fully customize your workspace. And to import a file into the project, you can double click in the project window here, or go up to file and down to import. So either way is absolutely fine. Now for the next bit, you can do this with your logo as a PNG on a transparent background. So you can just throw an image into After Effects and do it this way. However, because I have my logo as a font, I'm actually going to type mine. But again, either way is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to select the type tool here, click, and I'm going to type Dansky. So this is what my logo looks like. And then with the main selection tool, I'm just gonna scale this up. Whoa, not like that. So make sure you do hold shift. Otherwise it's gonna go all kinds of crazy. Okay, we'll pop that in the center. In fact, I can go to the align panel on the right. Just make sure it is definitely in the center. And then I've got the paragraph and character panels here so I can centrally align it, adjust the tracking if I want, so bring those a bit closer together. Size, font, weight, and you can see I'm using Dan Sands there as well. So you can adjust all of those properties if you're using a font, but if you have your own image, what you can do is just import it into the project panel and then just drag it into here. Or you can drag it down here into the composition panel and it will add it in the center of your main window. Once you've done that, we're going to go over here to effects and presets. I'm going to go down to generate, scroll down, grab stroke. Now you can drag this onto your object here in the window, or you can drag this over here onto a specific layer. So I'm going to do that. And then you can see the effect controls window pops up here. It will either pop up here independently, or it will be a tab alongside the project window. It depends how you've got your workspace set up, but remember you can undock it and drag those panels around. So for this next bit, what I'm gonna do is just zoom in and I'm gonna select all masks and from the color picker, just pick a completely bonkers color. We'll go with the lime green, why not? It doesn't matter what color you pick, just pick something nice and bright with a lot of contrast to your design. 
Once you've done that, go up here to the pen tool. And what we're going to do now is pen tool the path that we want our logo reveal effect to follow. So I want mine to start here and draw the logo something like this. So I'm kind of thinking about how I'm going to have it reveal and then end with the tail or the descender on the Y there. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we'll click, maybe go down here, back up. So I'm just single clicking or left clicking and holding to do curves. And going around like this, bring it back. And then I'm going to transition over into the A curve there. Now I don't want to continue this curve anymore so I can hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard, click on this point and it will convert that from a straight line to a curved line. Just bend it back in position then I can go back down. If you do click off or you deselect anything by mistake just grab that pen tool again, click on your anchor point where you'd like to pick it up and then continue. And you'll notice that the lines I'm drawing are terrible. Please hold your judgment, there is, uh, there is a good reason for this and you can always take more time with yours. So I'm, you can see I'm just bending these in. I'm going to try and do this nice and quickly because there are a few mistakes that you can make very easily in this part of the process. And hopefully I'll get the opportunity in a moment to show you exactly what I mean and how to avoid them. So I'm just going to try and go through this really quickly and crudely. Don't worry if you completely go outside of the lines once you complete a letter. So there we go. Now, as you can see, I don't want to continue this curve. Remember, hold Alt or Option, click. And what it will let me do then is continue my next point with a straight line. So we'll go up here. We're going to go down the K, back up, go up to here, do the bottom, go back, do the top. And then we're going to go and do the Y. And if you don't want to watch this in its entirety, feel free to skip forward. However, I'm telling you this as we are actually done now. So uh, anyway, there we go. Oh, we don't need that one. So alter option, click on those anchor points. And remember, it will convert it from a straight line to a curve and vice versa. So I think there are going to be quite a few mistakes in here and I'll show you how to rectify that in a moment. So if we go back over here, we can increase the brush size by clicking and dragging. And essentially we want to increase this brush so that it covers all of our letters. So you can see there are some white gaps there that will cause a few problems. So if I go over here to paint style and change this to reveal original image, what I can do now is grab the end or the start, either of those. I'm going to grab the end and you can see I can check the path that I've done. And we can do the same with start as well. So you can have it going front to back or back to front. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to use end and I can slowly scrub this through and see how this all comes together. So if you just look here, you can see where the green mask hasn't quite been large enough. It's kind of made this bit go a little bit funny, a little bit funny over here as well. So what I'm going to do is keep scrubbing through and just check how this animation looks. Not too bad, not too bad. So what I can do is if there is a bit that looks a bit wonky is I can scrub to where it is and then I can grab these anchor points and move this around in real time. So I can make those changes just to make sure all of my letters are being revealed exactly how I would like them to. Nothing is overlapping. Go back to end, scrub forward. So you can see I can move these points around in real time just to get the look I'm going for. And if I increase the brush size even more, you'll see that a lot of those issues that were like this, they start to disappear. But if I do increase the brush size too much, in fact, I'll just increase it a lot so you can see. Sometimes as the animation is playing, it will grab parts of other letters that aren't meant to have been drawn yet or other parts of your image, depending on the logo you're using. Of course, we want this to play out in a specific and very predetermined way. So I'm just going to set the brush size back to 30 
and press return. That seems like a good amount for this particular logo. Scrub through, there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is bring that all the way down to 0% so the logo is completely hidden and we're going to go down here to the composition panel and expand this down. And if I expand down the effects, any effects from the effect controls panel up here will also be listed down here and I can add some keyframes to control the animation. So I've grabbed my playhead, drag this all the way to the beginning. The end is set to zero, so I'm going to add a keyframe here. Think of this keyframe as a marker. So if I then move this forward, we'll go 15 frames. There we go. And because my frame rate is 30 frames per second and I set that up in the composition settings at the beginning, 15 frames will be half a second. And what I can do is then bring this up to 100%. So this animation will play for half a second. I can scrub this back to the beginning and press spacebar on the keyboard to play. Now that's a little bit too quick. So what I'm gonna do is just move this keyframe out to the one second marker, so 30 frames, and then it will play out over a slightly longer duration. There we go, cool, fantastic. So it can take a little bit of tinkering just to get everything animating correctly, moving those pen tool points around. You see they look incredibly messy, but actually when you play the effect out, it looks pretty cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to use a few GPU accelerated effects. So if we go up here, we'll collapse this down. We have our effects and presets panel. I can go up here to the menu icon, click, and I can select show GPU capable effects only. Now all of the effects you're seeing listed here are going to take advantage of that GPU acceleration. And your computer is just going to have an easier time rendering everything in real time. So we've got lots of different ones here. Now I'm going to use roughen edges. So if I just drag this onto my object either here or in the composition panel, you can't see anything because it's hidden, but if I drag forward, you can see how this looks. And I can turn this effect off and on here. So depending on your logo or your text, you might want to just kind of roughen it up a little bit with something more hand-drawn. So we've got roughen, we could make it uh, spiky. <laughs> Lots of different ones. Rusty, there we go, I can rust up my logo. Now I'm gonna keep it as roughen. And the great thing about this panel here is that you can adjust all of this in real time and see how it looks. So I could scale it, there you go, you could see, make the text just wiggle around. That's pretty cute, I like that. We can adjust the evolution and the angle. So you can just grab all these sliders and you can see you can go, you can go quite extreme with this. I'm not gonna go too crazy. There we go, something like this. So just roughened it up a little bit around the edges. Let's just have a look at that in action. So I'm gonna hit play. There we go, that looks pretty cute, I think. Now another GPU accelerated effect that I'm going to take advantage of just happens to be up here. So we can go to distort and transform. And you can see all the GPU accelerated effects are marked with this icon here. So I'm gonna grab transform, drop it onto my text or my logo, and I can actually just collapse these other panels here. I'm finished with these for now. And what I can do is actually go and skew this. So you can, uh, you can go very extreme with this and skew it on a particular axis if you want. I'm gonna go with something fairly subtle. We'll go for, we'll go for minus 10 like that. And if I just go here and just zoom the window back out and scrub back to the beginning and hit the space bar. You can see we've now added that cutesy rough and edges effect along with skewing it so it's kind of going in an upwards direction. So I can scrub this back to the beginning. Now, depending on the complexity of your design, your animation, your graphic, whatever it is, you'll see this green bar here indicates that this is rendered. Now, if you do have a dedicated NVIDIA card, you're just gonna have a much easier time playing this back in real time, and it will handle a lot more complexity all in one go and some of those accelerated effects. So we'll just play this one more time. And then remember, I can go up here I can turn off some of these effects. So I could keep this exactly as it was with the drawing animation at the beginning. It's definitely a personal preference, but I would encourage you to play around with these effects because they are a lot of fun.
Now, at the beginning, I had a sound effect. So if I just collapse this panel here and drag in that sound effect to the composition panel, I can scrub this back to the beginning. And in fact, I'm just going to expand this back out because I want my animation to play out for the duration of this sound effect. Now, this sound effect is from Epidemic Sound. You can get sound effects from everywhere online, even on YouTube. And I'm just dragging this keyframe. Remember, this keyframe here relates to the stroke effect. So this is actually the keyframe that determines the length of my animation. So there we go. I'll go back to the beginning. Click here to hide all those guides and everything and just press spacebar. And you can see we get that nice little sound effect as if our lettering or our logo is being drawn. And it's just a nice little touch, the cherry on top of the cake, if you will. And there we go, done. So that is how to bring your logo designs to life with a touch of animation in After Effects. And lastly, but by no means least, the competition. So this was for Adobe Dimension and the challenge was to create something, well, anything really, inside of Dimension with the goal of being as creative as possible. And over a hundred people entered with some quite honestly fantastic work. Like it was, it was so hard to pick a winner. You have no idea how stressful this was. However, it is a competition and there can only be one. So I'm excited to announce that the winner is, drum roll, Tim Sloft with this entry here. And to be honest, this person had some other entries too that were equally as good. And what really resonated with me personally was how they took their own two-dimensional paintings and integrated them as part of an original 3D scene. A scene that also includes floating objects. So a huge congratulations, Tim Sloft. I'll reach out to you on Instagram and we can sort out getting you your RTX 2070 prize. And thanks again to everybody who entered the competition and thank you to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. So if you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.